My name's Colleen, I'm the nurse unit manager here at Icon North Lakes. So I manage a small team of nurses. We take care of radiation and medical oncology patients. Been doing cancer nursing about 15 years now. It's my absolute passion, my world, I love it. So I tried a few different types of nursing. I did drug and alcohol, palliative care, and I was feeling quite burnt out. And then I discovered cancer nursing. And within a week, I knew that it was what I wanted to do. It's always difficult and it's a fine balance not to get too involved in their lives actually because you've become one of the family, um, especially if you're seeing the patients every day. Um, we see them from the day they kind of diagnosed and from the start of their education all the way through to the end of treatment and then even beyond as well. We really try to provide a really nurturing environment. It's really calm but also really uplifting and happy and we're incredibly patient with any questions um, and we're available 24-7 um, for that emotional support um, and they're happy to refer them on to other professionals for more help as well. Patients are mostly really anxious when they come through the doors. They don't know what to expect or they've got preconceived ideas. You know, we're very welcoming. We're very slow with their first education, very thorough, and we try to alleviate those fears before we even start any treatment. So it's a one-on-one -on -one lengthy consultation to begin with. Sometimes it takes a few rounds for people to figure out the best way they can cope mentally with actually being here having treatment. Some patients bring a family member or a friend and play board games, play cards, bring their own food. Um, some patients like to just put headphones on and completely zone out. There's hundreds of different regimes for all different types of treatment. Most treatments involve a lot of blood tests, um, some quite common side effects like nausea and tiredness. We expect people to um, become quite emotionally tired as well and drained and that's where they really need to reach out for extra help, um, not just from their friends and family but from us. Um, and there's Leukaemia Foundation hotline as well that they can call. It's sometimes nice to talk to someone that's not in your immediate world. It's nice to pick up the phone and talk to someone that's, you know, you're not going to run into down the street. Leukaemia Foundation also offer a lot of written support, um, which we hand out with every new patient. And there's the transport that's available for patients to and from treatment. And then we also offer treatments such as massage therapy, lymphedema. Dietitian is really important. Um, and then private counselling as well. The range of drugs for treating um, haematology patients is so vast. And with the initial consultation, we'll go through the most common side effects like tiredness, loss of appetite. Um, they're really common. Most people get them, but then we'll go into the more detailed side effects of loss of feeling in fingers and toes, loss of taste, hair loss of course as well. But the spectrum is so broad, so some patients might experience none of that and some might experience all of that. But the really important thing is that we know about the side effects because there's always things we can do to manage the, the symptoms. Um, so we really encourage patients to be honest about their journey and how they're feeling right write notes down in a diary about the side effects they're going through and we can always help manage them. When patients come to us for treatment, we initially give them just the baseline of drugs to help them at home with side effects. And we do really thorough assessments on them when they come for treatment. And then if their symptoms escalate, then we up the, the interventions. Um, sometimes patients might actually need a break from treatment for their bone marrow and their body and also their mind to recover, um, you know, to face another cycle as well. So um, we also do a lot of supportive blood therapy, so blood transfusions, platelet transfusions, things like that. Most patients will see the doctor on the day of treatment and the doctor will also check them out and make sure they're okay to go ahead and then they'll check in with our beautiful reception staff. Um, a nurse will then take them down to treatment, do that thorough physical assessment as well as their emotional 
wellbeing as well. We have to make sure that assessment's all okay before we're going ahead. And then we always need to check the blood test results before proceeding with treatment to make sure that their bone marrow is okay to handle another round. And then we give the pre-medications, um, which I think not a lot of patients know about. They just think you come in, have the chemo, but we load them up with pre-medications to help reduce the chance of sickness and reactions. So we put them in and then we'll start the treatment. And that can range from half an hour to seven hours long, depending on what they're having. Advice that I would give to patients going through treatment to take care of themselves, um, both physically and mentally, would be to reach out for help, first of all. There will be people offering to cook meals, to clean your house, to take the kids. Hopefully your workmates will be really accommodating. You need to take them up on those offers. Um, it's not a time to be proud and try and get through everything by yourself. This is where you need your team to come in when you're at home. The other thing is reaching out to the nursing staff and your haematologist um, if you're struggling. So you shouldn't be spending days in bed. You shouldn't be going without food and water for a whole day because you feel so sick. We need to know about things straight away um, to make your journey more bearable. Um, and then of course doing the things that you love still. You don't have to isolate at home. Um, there are certainly risky periods, but as long as you're safe and you're washing your hands really regularly, you're not touching your face and you're not in contact with anyone that's sick, you can get out and go to the beach with your kids and with your family, see your grandkids, hug and kiss. You know, do things that you really love, which is good for your mental health. The rewards of the job, they far outweigh the bad, the bad days. If it wasn't for the incredible moments of joy, the patients overcoming such adversity, I don't think any of us would come back, but there are so many small moments of joy during the day that I can see myself doing this for the rest of my life. It's meeting those patients that are incredibly anxious. They've been given this information from the doctor and they don't know what, what's next. And you can completely alleviate all those fears with one conversation. And then to see them overcome one treatment after the other, after the other, and battle those side effects and manage them and to thrive at the end and ring that bell. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's everything.